I mean, based on what's happening right now, I don't know if it's me or the printer. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can save costs on shipping. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jerrica and I am the owner and creator of Quench, which is a soap and bath mom company. And on this channel, I talk all about my business and I show you guys the ins and outs of how I do things, how I run this business out of my home, how I make my products, and how I save costs. Because as small uh, business, home-based entrepreneurs like you may be, costs of goods is everything and every little penny counts so if you want to see how we save on shipping which can be a pretty high expense when it comes to running an e-commerce small business then keep watching so for today's video we are actually going to be packaging a subscribers online order it's quite a sizable package and you can see how we deal with all the different shapes and sizes of all of the items that we are putting into that order and i'm actually going to be talking to you guys about the free x wi-fi thermal printer this video is not sponsored by them, but they did send me this thermal printer to review and try out. If you guys know anything about thermal printers, they use heat and not regular ink to print on labels. So although this could be a big cost up front over time, it could actually save us tons of money because ink is another huge expense when it comes to shipping. I actually filmed the unboxing of this printer a while back. I will insert that footage here. So here it is, FreeX Wi-Fi Super Roll Thermal Printer. So when you open the box, the first thing I see is a quick start video guide to go to so that you can watch a video that will help you get set up, which is great. I'm a visual learner. So here is the actual printer. Here are some cables and that is the whole box. And this is what it looks like. Look how small this is, it's so cute. And now that we got our thermal labels shipped to us and delivered from Staples, now I can finally review this guy and see how it works, whether or not I like it. And if it works and I do like it, that will be a huge saving point. So stay tuned for that. So as you can see, Lexi's order is quite large. <laughs> there is two pages worth of items that she has ordered, which is so generous. Thank you so much, Lexi, for your support. Hello, Dempsey. <laughs> and we have all of the items already in this large box here. Now, a thing about this order, it is actually being shipped to the States and shipping to the States can be quite costly. So later on in this video, we will tell you how we calculate the costs of shipping out to the States as well as our shipping costs in general, how we determine that number for customers. So if you look into the order here, we have soaps, we have bath bombs. She actually ordered a donut bath bomb from me, which is awesome. We have bath bombs that are freely floating around and we have lots of jars. Now, this is going to be quite a heavy package. She also ordered a soap gift set, which is in a box all in of itself. So the first thing that we do when we get an order like this is to gather all of our items that we need to fulfill that order and that is what we've done here. Buy boxes in a variety of sizes and you might say well you're spending more money aren't you? But I will tell you why that matters. When it comes to shipping every inch every centimeter counts. So you really want to get the right box for the right order so that you are filling it with as much product as possible and you don't have any empty space and when it comes to a soap and bath bomb company where you have different sizes of items and they're all weirdly shaped if you have a whole variety of sizes, then that is your first step into finding the right box and shipping those items out with the cheapest shipping label possible. Do you have an idea? These are all of our boxes. We have so many different sizes. Kale, can you tell me right off the top of your head how many size, sizes of boxes we actually have in our fulfillment room? Seven. Seven? Yep. Wow. Yes. And do you know the sizes of each? Oofta. Yeah. So let's go through here. here. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is right here. Eight by six by fours. Eight by six by fours. Rectangular. And these are rectangular. And then we have the folding boxes, which we use for a lot of our gift sets. And we have the folding boxes in, I think, two sizes or three sizes. Three sizes. Three That's sizes. The biggest size there, the nine by five by three inch. Nine by five. Works. Nine by five by three. And then we have a nine by three by three, I believe, right? Yep, that's over the, on the other side. On there, the other it's side. madness over here. <laughs> yeah, we're not very well organized, I know as you have noticed. <laughs> really love these quick folding mailing boxes because they are so 
great for not just getting a box quickly and also storing them because they're flat um, while they're not being used, but when they are put together, they actually make really great gift boxes and they look really, really pretty. In here, in Lexi's order, she has a soap gift set with three soaps and let me quickly show you what this gift set looks like on the inside. So what you're looking at here is a three soap gift set and the first thing you'll notice is that there's not a lot of room. It's very, very full. It's almost perfectly shaped to the objects inside and that is purposefully done. Our soap bars, when there's three in here, fit perfectly into the nine by five by three and we did that on purpose because of what I said before, you really want the right box for the right job and for here, this is perfectly shaped for our soap bars. And that's the first step. If you wanna have a three soap set like this, you wanna measure out each soap bar. And, and for us, three soaps across fits inside um, a nine inch wide box. And you also wanna take into consideration the height of the box. Now, even though these soaps are quite thin, we went with a three inch tall box. And the reason why is because we also sell jarred products. And when you, are running a business, you have to make decisions like that, whether or not you are gonna go for um, a box that's perfectly suited to something like this or a box that's more versatile and can carry more of your items. That is a tip if you wanna streamline your processes, which is what we decided ultimately. We'd rather have just one box that's good for most things and there might be a little bit of space when it comes to bars like this, but because we sell so many sets that include a jar that's about three inches thick, this box is perfect for that. Measure out all of your items and make sure that you get a box that fits a lot of what your combinations might be. For this large box, what size is it? Do you know, Kale? This is the largest one we have that we buy in bulk. This is a 16 by 12 by four inch box. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking at everything now because we got some jars stacked up here. I'm hoping that everything fits. Yeah, I'm hoping. If not, we'll we'll see what other options we have. We do have a bigger square box, but that means we're kind of stacking some things on top, but um, we'll try to get everything to fit in here. Yeah, looking at it right now, it does look like it's gonna be a snug fit, but that is what we want. We want the snuggest fit possible that will allow these objects to get shipped out safely and securely so that nothing gets broken, and also while saving us the money in postage costs. While Hale is getting that package ready to be shipped, I'm going to try to figure out this FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer. And I do want to mention that this video is not sponsored by FreeX, but they did send me this printer for free. I paid for the labels. So thank you so much FreeX for sending this to me to try out and see whether or not this is going to be a good addition to our shipping process flow. And you guys know me, I'm always looking for ways to improve our processes, whether or not it's through saving time or saving costs or just generally making life easier for us as small business owners. So let's see how quickly I can get this up and running. And now before I get into the actual review of this, a few notes on the FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer. This is the world's first wireless thermal printer on both Mac OS and Windows, which is super convenient. And what makes this printer unique is that there is a built-in super roll holder, which can contain up to 600 four by six shipping labels. Compare that to other printers like this that only hold about 250 labels per roll, so that's pretty good, which means this makes it perfect for everyday business use. And if you run an e-commerce business like mine where you're getting steady sales, having a printer that can hold a ton of labels is definitely a good thing. And just from looking at it, it's pretty compact. Like I am lifting it up in my hands and tossing it around almost. There are no labels inside of it right now, but I don't think the labels are gonna add that much weight to it. But if you compare this compact guy next to my uh, inkjet printer, which is what I currently print my shipping labels on, this is pretty small and this could be hidden anywhere. Pretty out of the way and I really like that about it actually. If you're a home-based business like I am, Saving space where you can is huge because as you guys can see, our fulfillment center is kind of a mess and super disorganized. <laughs> so the less shelf space a printer can take up, the better. And if this printer does what it says it does, not only is it compact in size, but it saves a lot on hassle too because it will print out shipping labels in the perfect size that all we have to do is peel off the sticker and stick it on our package and then we're ready to go. Right now, our process is we print it out on just a regular sheet of paper, we cut it to size, tape it down. See, I just listed about 70 more steps than, <laughs> than what it takes to get a shipping label out of this guy. And maybe the most important thing is that this guy comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not happy, 
with how he performs, you can get your money right back. So just judging from those features, I'm already kind of sold on this guy. So hopefully he is as good as he sounds on paper and let's get him up and running. Update on Lexi's package. <laughs> so we're gonna need a bigger box. <laughs> not gonna be able to fit everything in here. Uh, looks like I'm just gonna be two or three bath bombs uh, sure. too short on space. Yeah. So uh, we're just gonna Size get up. this 12 by 12 square box. Um, there will be less room on the bottom, but we yeah. can stack some things up a little bit higher. Yeah, and you will run into that. You'll run into the situation, especially if you offer a variety of products like we do, where you don't have just the right box for the right situation. So in that instance, you do the best you can, and this is what we're gonna do. So while Kale is figuring that out, I'm going to continue trying to set up this free X printer. And when I got the box, it came with this card, which points to a link in a quick start video which is super handy. So I'm gonna go check this link out right now and watch um, what this video is. So when I go to that link, it brings me to a quick start guide where it lets me know what the box comes with. And as you can see here, there is no labels that come with the box. So that's something to keep in mind. And if I scroll down further, the first step is to go print via USB port. So I've just installed the free X Wi-Fi thermal printer software into my Mac. So the next step down here is to power on and connect via USB port. So the printer came with a USB cable and the power plug, I guess is what it's called. I'm just going to free these guys of their plastic wrappings and get this printer plugged in. And a quick update on the package. Kale has managed to fit everything in and yeah, looks great. So what I did here is I put that gift set on the bottom along with all the jars that created a nice even layer. I put some cardboard on top of that the soaps up here and our series of bath bombs here. I'm gonna put some more, another layer there. And then the last layer will kind of be just the crown jewel here, our donut bath bomb. <laughs> so on the printer, there's these ports in the back of it. And I'm gonna plug this USB end into my Mac. So it's beeping at me. Um, but the next step is to go to system preferences and click on printers and scanners. And a reminder, I'm using a Mac, so I don't know if this will be the same step for all of you Windows users. Hey guys, a bit of an update. It is actually quite some time later, and I have not been able to get this printer to print, and I don't know why, I have no idea. So unfortunately, this review is incomplete. It's either user error or it's a problem with the machine. I am not sure. I've reached out to the company to see whether or not they can help me with this issue. I am using thermal paper, the paper is calibrated, I just don't know what is going on with this. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate to you guys whether or not this is a good product. I mean, based on what's happening right now, I don't know if it's me or the printer. And if the problem is with the labels, then I really wish that FreeX had sent me some compatible labels to use with this because I read on their website whether or not their printer was compatible with other thermal paper. Yeah, so I mean, in terms of setup, it was pretty straightforward. In terms of execution, I don't quite know what to say. I don't know if I, again, am doing this incorrectly or not. So I will give you guys an update on this guy, but that still doesn't discount the fact that thermal printers will, if you are using them properly or if the machine is working properly, will save you money because like I mentioned before, the labels are printed via heat and not ink and that will save you a lot of money and ink costs. I will not be saving money today in my label, but hopefully I will soon once I get this figured out. I will give you guys an update, I promise. <laughs> so it is now many hours later. We had to take a break from packaging Lexi's order and we had to um, do a few puppy things, hashtag puppy life. <laughs> but we are now back at it. Kale is now in the process of inputting all of Lexi's information into Canada Post so we can create her shipping label. Now, this package is actually going to the States. And when it comes to shipping to the States, Kale and I only use one carrier and that is Canada Post. We have tried other carriers before with disastrous results. We have tried um, UPS, was not good. We have tried, what was the other ones that we tried, Kale? Purolator, which Purolator. isn't in the US, but it's a Canadian company, but then it goes off to another carrier in the States, so. And then who else did we try? We tried DHL. Um, DHL, yep. and what's that other one? There's one more. 
FedEx. FedEx. Yeah. We tried other carriers and we have found that shipping through Canada Post, which turns into USPS when it crosses the border, was the only carrier that we used that there were no broken packages um, and also there were no surprise custom fees that our customers had to bear the brunt of once they received the package, which is so distressing. And I, as a customer, I would hate to have had um, a package that I've been waiting so long for to be told it's only going to be released to me if I pay like 60 bucks. And yes, it was upwards to $60 for a package that cost them uh, at the time $30 and then another $20 to ship it to them. So we decided to never use those carriers again and we have had very minimal issues using Canada Post and that which turns into USPS when it crosses the border. Now, um, we have had issues lately with some of the packages getting stuck in certain sorting facilities, namely Chicago, and I think it might have something to do with what's going on in the world. But um, other than that, our packages are getting to our customers really fast. So if you're looking for a carrier, I highly recommend USPS for America or Canada Post. Those have been the most reliable for us. There are a ton of benefits also with shipping through Canada Post and USPS. For example, Canada Post has their small business program, which gives you a little bit of a discount when you ship through them. And that discount grows the more you ship. So as your business grows, the higher your discount gets. And I know with USPS, there is an option, I think on their website to get free boxes as well. Their priority mailboxes are free. So that is a huge benefit. But here is another cost saving tip. I'm not sure if there's any of an equivalent like this in America, but here in Canada, we also ship sometimes through eShipper. And eShipper is an alternative shipping service that gives us the cheapest postage rate from a variety of different carriers that are not, um, th wait, do they include Canada Post or not anymore? They don't anymore. They, they used, to used to, yeah. They used to uh, give us Canada Post rates and they no longer do. But what we will do with, I think all of our packages is we input the information in both websites, both in Canada Post and in eShipper to see what the price difference is because sometimes there will be a price difference. Now, I did say that we never ship packages using UPS, FedEx, or Purolator um, to the States, but within Canada, we have found that um, that is not really a concern. We've had packages get to their destinations pretty much okay. That's why when we get uh, an order where the address is a Canadian address, we will input the information both in eShipper and in Canada Post to get the best price. And I do find that sometimes the savings is quite significant depending on the two, and so it's been worth it to us to check both sites each time. And for this next tip, this may be an obvious one, but get your packaging materials in bulk. The savings that you can get with buying a lot of packing materials is quite significant. And I know with Staples, it's worth it to look at all of their options because sometimes they have a really wide variety of the same thing that they supply through different companies. For example, their paper bags, there's so many options of paper bags to choose from at different amounts. I would say it's worth the time to check each listing to see how much a certain number of bags will end up costing you because I know it's tempting to just stay on the first page but go through all the pages and if you know exactly what you want in terms of size then you can input those details and that search will go a lot faster. So I mentioned staples but you can also get bulk packaging supplies from Uline and we really love Uline as well because you can get the really really big bulk purchases from there. For example, our crinkle paper over in Staples, the largest amount you can get is, I think it's 20 pounds? The crinkle paper from Staples, how much? The box that we get is 10 pounds. I don't know if that's the largest size or not though. It, it is. It is? Okay, yeah. so the largest size would be 10 pounds, yeah. So for Staples, the largest size of crinkle paper that we can get is 10 pounds, but over in Uline, we can get crinkle paper at how much? 40 pounds at 40 pounds. And buying in bulk with packaging materials, if you're serious about your business, is just the natural way to go because unlike products that have an expiry date, boxes and crinkle and all of this stuff can sit on shelves as long as 
you want and they won't go bad so once you know exactly what your packaging and shipping is going to look like and what you want to do and you've done it a few times definitely take that leap and purchase things in bulk. I know when I was buying the 10 pound crinkle paper boxes from Staples, I was always ordering them constantly. And I just think about all the money I could have saved if I had just bought that 40 pound uh, box from Uline. So the number one question that I get asked all the time is how do we calculate shipping costs? We, what we did is we took a whole bunch of data. We took about three or four months worth of shipments and packages and we just came up with what the average cost was going to be for those packages. So the number that we landed on for the US for shipping was a nice even around $20. We just kind of rounded uh, up or down, I can't remember which way, to $20. And for Canada, it was for 15. Um, we've been noticing lately with a lot of our uh, packages, and I've just recently got some emails from Canada Post saying, our, hey, our rates are going up or have gone up. So um, our packages, um, more often than not lately, we've been uh, losing a few, uh, a couple cents on, or sometimes more than that, on a lot of them going up. Yeah, so as a new business, we were still trying to figure things out and we didn't want to scare the customers from hitting that final put in or confirm my order at the very end just because they were scared away from the shipping costs. So what we tried to do in the beginning was have that nice, friendly, flat fee that wouldn't scare customers off. And for the most part that has helped us and worked, but we are finding more and more that that number really is not the best number for us in terms of shipping. And it's definitely not the most accurate way to do it. So it's something that we suggest maybe not to do. <laughs> if you want to start calculating shipping, you should do it right from the start and you should try to pass off that cost as much of it as you can to the customer. And that's why what we're doing moving forward is using Shopify to calculate that cost for us. And it's really cool that Shopify has that feature because it's super easy for us to know exactly what the actual shipping label cost will be and the customer will end up paying that. So for whatever online platform you're using to sell your products, if that online platform has the option to have the app calculate it for you and take some of that guesswork out, then definitely do it that way. That's definitely the easiest and probably the most accurate way. But even then, if you decide to go with that method, it might still not align with what you're getting if you're buying your labels separate from that app. So like we mentioned before, we don't get our actual labels through Shopify or through Etsy. We go to either Canada Post or eShipper to do that. This should make it closer than what it was. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because it goes by, I think, weight. So there's still a little bit of calculating that we have to do on our end, but it's a good starting point to know. And a lot of these e-commerce platforms have so that you can go into the website as a dummy uh, customer and make a test purchase. So that way you can see how much the end customer is actually getting charged for certain orders. So I would highly recommend that you do that just to see um, what your customer is going to end up being charged. Because as a business, you really want to know what that checkout experience is going to be like from beginning to end. So Kale has Lexi's box all packaged up over here. Yep. So we ended up going with this 12 by 12 by 12 box. It's a nice, perfect square. And yeah, everything's just on there in different, la uh, different layers. So yeah. um, Lexi, if you're watching this, which I know you probably are, <laughs> you're going to see that it's first going to be kind of that donut bath bomb up for, on top, then another layer of the many other bath bombs you ordered, I think six or seven other bath bombs. Mm -hmm. And then the soap is kind of on that same layer. Underneath all that is the gift set that she ordered and the all the jarred products. She ordered two lotions and three sugar scrubs. Sweet. Yeah, we really hope that this box will get to you safely. We have a really good track record of getting boxes, big orders into the States and all the items arriving perfectly intact. So yeah. I feel pretty confident it's about that. that ding, Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, uh, that's the one thing. Warehouse that is- uh, Holding up a few of our Holding packages. us up, yeah. And even a personal package to my mother oh. for her birthday back in April. I don't know what's going on there. So. That is super upsetting. I feel so terrible about that. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it. We are in the middle of talking about the order and then baby boy woke up and he needs to go for a pee, so puppy life <laughs> and I'm holding this now and it's really hard you have quite a talent in holding this yeah it requires a surprising amount of 
arm strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like I can do curls with this. But so. I think that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And if you guys want to join our wonderful Patreon community, please do so. There's a link down in the description below. And thank you to our beautiful patrons who have joined in the BFF tier. You can check out their businesses, link down below. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome. And also keep making beautiful things and cuddling beautiful things like Gibson. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>